Ladies and gentlemen, a warm welcome to Jamie Pickett up against Bo Nickel this weekend. This one has been in the works for a while. It was cancelled once. What is it like fighting a guy with this much hype behind him? How much are you relishing the chance to show him that there are different levels when it comes to MMA? Um, I'm excited about it. I think the guy, I think he's at that level. I think he's... He's a game opponent. I don't think um, – I don't know how good he is. I mean, nobody knows how good he is yet. But I think he's a game opponent. I think he wouldn't be here if he wasn't. Um, I think he's proven himself already a little bit. And uh, he has plans to prove himself some more. And I have plans to stop that proof. He can prove it, he can prove it with the next guy, basically what I'm saying. You must have gone into – you must have gone into fights being the heavy favorite. In this case, you're the underdog. The bookies are like all over him. How do you feel about that? I mean, the pressure's off me. <laughs> I mean, no problem. I mean, if I lose, I'm supposed to lose, right? If I win, it's like, oh man. So I'm like, I'm, I'm relaxed. I'm chill. I'm good. I'm just waiting to fight. Do you think it's fair to say that you're an all rounder? I am. I'm all the way around. I'm all around. He's way better at wrestling, obviously, but. I got good. I'm good everywhere. Stand up, on the ground, wrestling, jiu-jitsu. I'm good everywhere. How do you fancy yourself in a striking battle with him? Is that is that your best path to victory? I don't know. I don't know if he can strike. He might, he might be a good, an excellent striker. I don't know. But I know I am. We'll find out. Is this the biggest opportunity in your career right now? Yes, I would say so. Because it's only because it's on John Jones' card. You know, if it wasn't for John Jones, being on John Jones' card, I mean, I'm on it because I'm fighting Bo Nichols. So I definitely understand that. But the, it's a big opportunity because I'm on John Jones' card. That's what makes it so much, you know, makes it great. You've got experience when it comes to, you know, doing the three rounds. He doesn't. Is that going to be a factor if you take it a little bit deeper in the fight? I don't know. He's a wrestler. They're, I mean, they mentally tough, man. They, they don't. I mean, I don't think they have cardio issues. Do you think it's arguable that he's the best wrestler in the UFC? No, because John Jones is still in the UFC. <laughs> as far think- as like just wrestling, just wrestling, like not MMA wrestling, but strictly wrestling. I don't know. Like I gotta say, I'm not trying to be a dick when I say this. I really don't know too much about him, really. They just said nobody wanted to fight him. Did you fight him? I was like, yeah. Nobody wanted to fight him. I guess. That's what I'm hearing. I don't know if it's true or not, but that's what I basically. Well, I ain't gonna say nobody wanted to fight him. They uh didn't ask the right people, I guess. What does that say about you then? I'm down to fight anybody. Hell, John Jones, anybody. If they want to fight, then if I'm getting paid for it, let's do it. <laughs> if I'm not getting paid, it ain't coming. You would fight John Jones, man. He's looking like a monster these days. Are you uh are you backing him to win? win? I ain't say I'd win, <laughs> but I'd fight him. <laughs> yeah, I got him winning. I'll I'll never be I'll never bet against John Jones. He's just too good, right? Yeah, he's the goat. What about the middleweight division overall for you? I mean, how big are your ambitions in this division? Oh man, I'm trying to ride this thing to the wheels fall off. I'm getting old, man. So I'm I'm doing the best I can with what I got. If I can get up in the top ranks, that's what I'm going to do. But, you know, I'm going after it best I can. I'm trying to fight whoever, hard as I can. I'm trying to get up there before I'm too old to do it, man. I'm 34, man. I might be 35. What is your biggest uh, motivation for getting up to train to do this sport? What do you like about it? I get to live my dream every day. My dream was to be in the UFC. I got in a little, I got the UFC really late, but I made it, you know. A lot of people can't say they made it. People can talk, talk crap on me or talk junk about fighters or any athlete you want, but you got to watch. You sitting at home watching. I get to live it. So I don't even, like, my motivation is knowing that I'm here. I get to showcase in front of millions of people. Good or bad, showcase. I still get to do it. How important has the Contender Series been in letting us see great talent make its way into the octagon into the ufc well look at it we already got one champion already 
you know, Hill's our champion. So they we bringing in good people. They brought they brought in good people. You got me fighting Bo Nickel. I mean, we we, we uh we're showing contender series guys ain't gonna play with. We've been fighting, we've been we've been whooping ass, we've been getting our ass whooped. We in here. So I love it. Do you think there could be a comparison made between Bo Nickel and somebody like Hamzat? Mm, no. No. Chum, uh, Chum, Chumza, I can't really say his name that well, but Chumza is, <sighs> what I can see, that's different. That's a whole nother animal. That's a whole nother level. That's a whole nother level. I still fight his ass stuff. I mean, <laughs> it's like, if I'm getting paid, I'm there. Do you think uh, this has a potential bonus on it for you? This fight? Hell yeah! Somebody you don't who who wants to prove everybody he wants to prove that he wants to prove everybody right. He wants to prove everybody right that he is the hype train they think he is. He has a lot to prove, right? I'm going out there to prove myself. I'm not no run over, so I'm about to go out there and bang. So. I think me and him could take the damn show. Both our mindsets are locked on killing each other. So let's get it. Who called you the Night Wolf? Who gave you that name? Where'd that come from? <laughs> like this, this like this question gets asked all the time. The Night Wolf is a is a quad. It's a four wheel. I have a rat with a seven hundred R that I raced illegally raced, but I race it. And everybody calls their bikes different things, and I start calling my bike the Night Wolf. And then it gets stuck, and people start calling me Night Wolf in my community, like where I'm from. But like, yo, Night Wolf, what up? Because of my bike, I was winning a lot of races. So I was like, you know what? I'm just gonna put it as my stage name. Everybody, it's clicking. Nothing big. Something simple. I'm a simple dude, man. I don't really give a fuck. You uh, what was it like for you growing up in Carolina? Were things pretty tough? Did that help, like, shape you as a fighter? Did that help get you to where you are today? Yeah, it did. I mean, y'all know the story. I had, a, I had a rough childhood, but I had a good childhood, too. I had an amazing childhood. I mean, it was rough, but at the same time, I wouldn't take it back, man, to be honest with you. I mean, a lot of people, I see people nowadays, they break up every little thing. I done had it. I done had it real bad. No electricity, no food, nothing. I done had it real bad. And then on the other spe- spectrum, my grandparents, I grew up with money. People don't know that either. I grew up poor and I grew up with money. So I've had both sides of the, of the game. It's all about how you look at it, man. Don't, don't take everything to heart. And just love everybody, man. Love life. Live this life for what it's what is worth. We ain't going to be here no more. Have fun. Do what you want to do. Kick the out of somebody. Ride some dirt bikes. Have a good time, man. I don't have no hate towards nobody. That's a, that's a fantastic attitude, man. Um, I want to ask you about Izzy Pereira 3. Is Izzy going to finally get the job done? Well, Izzy Pereira 4, really. Well, how many times they fought now? With, what, twice in kickboxing, once in MMA? Four. Yeah, this might be the fourth time. I got Izzy. I got Izzy. I got Izzy, man. Izzy the middleweight goat, besides Anderson Silva, obviously. But that's because Anderson did so much. Did so much. But Izzy... I think Izzy was winning that. Izzy was definitely winning that fight. I think the referee called it too early. We don't know if he would have stopped that or not because he was still in there. That's when the referee came. He looked up, looked at him like, I mean, he was getting hit, but hell, I mean, fighters, you fight. How many times you see these fighters get hit and fall down and get back up? I mean, he's a champion. Let the man go out on his fucking shield, man. If you get knocked out, let him get knocked out. He's a champion. Why well, stop that? You know what I'm saying? Like, Bad call on ref. I don't agree. That's interesting to hear your perspective. I'm going to wrap this up with a little quick fire, if that's okay with you, about some of your UFC colleagues. So who is the hardest hitter in the UFC? The hardest hitter? Derek Brunson. Best wrestler? In weight class or the whole UFC? Whole UFC. Best wrestler in the whole UFC. Chumza. Who's the funniest? Funniest? Damn. I say me, but nobody really nobody really know me like that. It's definitely me, but nobody really knows me like that. So I would say Buckley 
or um, what's the dude, the skinny dude that went to 185, went to 170, not black dude. Paper trail or trailblazer. Trailblazer. Oh, Kevin Holland. Kevin Holland. Yeah, Kevin Holland. I don't know why. I love that dude. I don't know why I couldn't know what I'm saying. Kevin Holland. Yeah. Who's the most annoying? Most annoying? Right now? Without him doing anything, Bo Nickel is the most annoying motherfucker on this earth. And he ain't did nothing to me. It's not because anything he's done is his fans. <laughs> his fans has made me think he's annoying. He's probably like the coolest dude in the world, but his fans have made me feel like he's annoying. Who's the best looking? Oh, definitely me. By far. <sighs> probably me. Now, uh, the best looking, I would have to say, man, the best looking, it's between two people. Hey, mm. Damn, what's her what's her name? She just fought. What's her name? She's one. She came back to knee knee replacement. I know. I had a I had a crush on her for a long time. She just fought. She just won. She had a knee replacement. She's a wrestler. She not knee replacement. She had she missed Tatiana her Suarez. Tatiana Suarez. Yes, Lord. Tatiana Suarez. And what's the Brazilian chick name that smits everybody? Mackenzie Dern. Mackenzie Dern. Uh, who's, the most, the, who's the most stylish best dressed most stylish Izzy who would, Izzy you most like, who would you most like to go out to dinner with Mackenzie Dern <laughs> who's got the best hands Mm. That's a good one, man. This hands. Damn, that's a. I hate that guy. Hollow, ho Holloway, Max Holloway. Best fight IQ. John Jones. Most interesting female fighter. Mackenzie Turn. <laughs> and, uh, who would you most want by your side in a street fight? Mackenzie Dern. I can handle. I can handle the fight. I got just just water by my side. We good. <laughs> Last one. Uh, who would be your dream fight in any weight class, past or present? Izzy. Awesome. Mate. Not because I think I could beat him. Not because I think he sucks, but I could beat the shit out of him. I just think. And my style, and he, if he uses the style he uses with his kickboxing, my style, I think when I don't have to worry about a takedown and I'm just kickboxing, I think that'd be a fun fight. A lot of spins and kicks and knees. I think we would I think it'd be fun. It's been fun, Jamie. Good luck. Nice fun, Thanks man. Thanks a lot, man.